My son Vernon was always quite odd. One of his favorite pastimes was keeping insects, mainly cockroaches. As a mother, of course, I was concerned as it wasn't the sort of thing that a child should have been occupying himself with, so I tried my best to discourage and foil the obsession, but there's only so much one can do. I didn't want my child to grow up hating me, so eventually, I relented and I let him continue pursuing his fixation, under close eye of course. I thought it was nothing but a fad, a whim and something that would eventually right itself. Children are quite fickle, unpredictable, so you know I wasn't overly apprehensive, not at first. He would collect any insect he could find. His favorite thing was frequenting nearby woodland areas and parks rummaging around in the damp earth to see what creepy crawly he could fish out. He even went as far as to beg me to buy him a lizard, so that he could always have various insects to stare and ogle at around the house. I caved and bought him a bearded dragon, who he named Rosie. Bearded dragons devour all sorts of insects, and roaches were one of its main delicacies. I wasn't a fan, but it made Vernon happy, and what else could a mother want? After a while, he started breeding them to make his own colony. Some for Rosie and some for me, Mommy, he used to say. Our spare bedroom was full to the brim with containers of various sizes, all encasing these nasty little creatures. Vernon would spend hours tending to them. I'd walk in and find him elbow deep in the mountain of roaches. The creatures scuttled up and down his little arms. He'd sit there his face a picture of happiness. He'd be there for hours, eyes closed and smiling. I'd always wondered what he was thinking about. What was going through his little mind as he sat there? I had a weird little kid. I had my limits though. I forbade Vernon from having them in his room or any other place in the house. They were to be confined to one space and nowhere else. For a while, Vernon listened. He was okay with it, and it didn't bother him. But I noticed he wanted to leave our spare bedroom less and less. He began refusing to go to bed when I asked him to, often demanding that I let him sleep in the spare room with Rosie and his beloved roaches. I said no, of course, but every time I did, I could feel his little eyes darting toward me like daggers. I didn't like how he looked at me then. I thought you were a good mommy, he'd say to me. I'd frown, his words stung, and I think he knew that. I am a good mommy, Vernon, I'd say, wrapping my arms around him. He'd wriggle out from under my embrace. The anger would just radiate off of him. I wish my mommy was roaches, he'd say. During times like this, being a single mother was difficult and I yearned for Vernon's father Cecil to be around more. He only came around at weekends, and with each visit, Vernon would distance himself more and more. Cecil wasn't too pleased with the fact that I was letting Vernon play around with insects, but in fairness to me, I was doing my best, and if he wanted to raise his child his own way, then he shouldn't have abandoned us for that girl Victoria. I told him as much. As time went on, Vernon became increasingly more consumed by his addiction. He started to disobey me, and one morning, I found his room covered with jars, buckets, a plethora of different sized containers, all filled with these slimy winged creatures. It was disgusting as well as disturbing, but I was at a loss for what to do. I demanded Vernon dispose of them. He would look at me with a terrifyingly vacant expression and outright refuse. No, Agatha, he'd say. Agatha? He'd never called me that before. I am your mother, Vernon, and you will do as I say. Now you get rid of those things at once. I'd had enough by this point. The next day, as if by miracle, there would be double the amount of squirming things. I couldn't fathom how they were multiplying so quickly. I had begun to notice other changes within Vernon. 
he was becoming more withdrawn, quiet, and aloof. Basically, it wasn't the sort of behavior that a 10-year-old should be exhibiting. I started hearing peculiar sounds emanating from within his room, too. Sounds of chewing, crunching. When I'd take a peek, I'd see Vernon lowering one of the roaches into his mouth. They would wriggle and protest, but Vernon would shut down their complaints by a loud and hard smack of his little teeth. He'd sit and chew for a long time before he finally swallowed and my flesh would be assaulted by goosebumps watching him. I had decided enough was enough when I watched him put his hand down his throat and retrieve a spiked leg. A few nights later, I was in bed. My deep sleep was interrupted by sounds of scratching. As I suspected, the noise were coming from within Vernon's room. I was apprehensive when I approached it. I really didn't know why. Something at the back of my mind was telling me not to. When I entered, the room was pitch black and I fumbled for the light switch. When I flicked it on, the sight that assaulted my eyes was unspeakable. Roaches filled every crevice of the room, every little hole. They were everywhere. They squirmed and scurried all over each other. Vernon was leaning over Cecil, his father. I watched as my ex-husband's stomach constricted, morphed, and quivered. Then the skin ripped open, splitting at the fleshy seams. It tore apart as easy as a sheet of paper. Inside, a million cockroaches slithered and thrashed. Vernon, what have you done? Vernon beamed happily, a crazed grin from chin to chin. Daddy is roaches now, Mommy. I only get to visit my son on weekends now. He resides in a psychiatric facility just outside of town. He is more withdrawn than ever, hasn't spoken since that night. I blame myself more and more each day, wishing that I had done something, anything. I should have never let it get that far. I just wanted Vernon to be happy. Isn't that what every parent wants for their child? Endless happiness? I made a mistake that will haunt me until the end of my days. Everyone makes mistakes, don't they? We're not all picture-perfect parents, and I was trying my best. Was Cecil's death all my fault? Yes, I wholeheartedly believe that it was, and I will spend the rest of my life atoning for that. Was how Vernon turned out my fault? I don't know. I don't think I'll ever know. I rid my house of cockroaches, flushed them all down the toilet. Every single one. I had to rehome the lizard because I couldn't bring myself to feed it what it needed. I have tried to make some sort of life for myself since the incident. But how can you truly forget something like that? I lost my child. I lost his father. It was difficult. I've been having trouble sleeping lately. I keep having nightmares. I can't rid the image of Cecil laying there, his stomach ripped open, cockroaches all writhing and squirming inside. It's haunting. I think I've been hearing things recently too. Strange scratching sounds. They have been coming from Vernon's bedroom. I haven't been able to go in his room since it all happened, but who can blame me? I finally did the other night. I haven't been able to explain what I saw inside. When I walked into his room, I saw a small pile of cockroaches on the floor, squirming and wriggling. As I neared, they started shifting and morphing, forming words. You shouldn't have done that, Mommy. Mommy.